Hi all, I thought, as uh, I'm actually feeling rather bored tonight, and I want to build another one anyway, that we would uh, build a, I don't know whether to call it retro or what, but an old PC, an old Windows XP PC with gaming in mind. So that being said, I'll run through a checklist of everything that we need. So starting here we've got power supply and in this case I am using a 350 watt power supply. One case which can be a case of your choosing an ultra modern one or an older one like this one. Two fans RAM, and in my case there's one and a half gigs of DDR RAM here. I have got the processor for the motherboard, which is a Pentium Intel. I can't quite read it, it's two point something gigahertz anyway. 200 gig IDE hard drive, floppy drive, ROM drive, the motherboard, uh, some screws, the I.O. plate for the motherboard, the cooler, an assortment of screwdrivers. You don't really need that many, just a couple of different sized uh, flat heads and two different sized Phillips heads. And of course, your CD. And as it will be a gaming rig, you do need video cards, but I will get into that in another video. So. I've also got a couple of pots of various screws dotted about as well that I'll need. So, I'll move that there. I have forgotten the zip ties, so I'll have to go and grab those. Now, I've already undone the cover screws on this, so I'm going to go ahead and pull them off. And just stand them down here. I'm going to pull both sides off. Because uh, this case is that old, that old, that, uh, you screw everything in. Oh, that's the other thing I haven't found either, and that's my thermal paste, which uh, when I get to that bit, I'll pause and I'll go and find it. I know it's not too far away, in fact. I didn't lay it in there, did I? No. If it's not in there, I've got a rough idea where it's going to be. Right. So what I'm going to start off with is the power supply playing. Now, um, this is an Eagle brand. Again, you can pick whatever brand you want. And the reason I'm going to start with this is because it saves trying to, uh, you know, try and jimmy it in there a butt, well, without damaging the motherboard. So start the top, work down. So we're going to start with the power supply. They usually go in with the sticker facing you. That's usually their orientation, so with that step, all four screws should roughly line up. Yeah, they do. I always find they usually don't exactly line up, but they line up enough. So, I am going to pick four screws. This just shows how many uh, PCs I've taken apart, really, doesn't it? Make sure that's lined up. Once you've got the first sort of, when you've got the first one in, it's easy, and it gets easier when you go to put the last next one in, and then easier after that. Just the first screw acts as your third hand, he says. I might cheat. This is why I keep hard drive magnets about, so I can uh, magnetise my screwdrivers, because these are good for that. So I've taken apart a couple of knackered old hard drives just for the mag magnets. So, a little tip for you. Take your hard, old hard drives apart, salvage those, and now you've got a magnetic screwdriver. 
That will make life a darn sight easier when they're trying to install screws. Got that one started. And another one. I'm actually using screws. They look like they're star screws, but they've also got a slot on them for a slot screwdriver. Some computers use those screws, especially OEM ones, probably to try and prevent, you know, the likes of you and me, aka the general public, from um, opening them up. So you'd have to take them to a, a specialist, which uh, isn't always the case. Isn't always the case. Oh, get it, case. It's the last one, but you always get one that's going to be a pain in the backside to go in. Get in there. Okay, so our power supply is now in. Um, next task, I'm going to put our necessary drives in the front here, and to do that in this case, I'm going to pop the front off, which is just a uh, the matter of these uh, three tabs on these ASUS cases. So that makes life easy. <laughs> right. Um, oh, probably didn't do my processor a lot of good. <laughs> so make sure this is actually set to master and I can't actually read it. one jumper off, I don't know why there was two on it, but uh, this will slide in from the inside, like so. Floppy disk drive will go in on top. You don't need a floppy disk drive, but I'm trying to keep this, you know, as as accurate to what it would have been back then Oops. as possible. DVD drive in. No. Go ahead and reattach front panel. The top bit didn't go in properly. There, I think it has now. Yeah. Right. There's that drive, my floppy disk drive. I could go all out, put a card reader on it and blah blah blah, but the card reader will never get used on this machine, so I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to plug in USB ports, but I think I've only got one. Yeah, I've got only I've only got one USB header, unfortunately. So only two of the front USB ports are going to work. That doesn't matter though. Certain screws I'm actually looking for, and I found one. No. Oh well. Right. I'll just use a couple of anodized pink ones, I think. lined up and when it lines up with the front there it should line up in here as well. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a couple of screws in this side then go around the other side and do the same. Sliding around I should have put the one in the front first. Crank this one down. 
You only need one in the other side. You could put two in if you really want to, but I just like to put one in on the other side. But before I do that, I'm going to get all of the screws in this side first. So it saves turning the machine around, I don't know how many times. Okay. I've got another one of those. Maybe another two of those. What's that one? Is that one? No, but it might fit. Again, this just saves trying to wiggle things in with the motherboard there because I guarantee the RAM and the heatsink will get in the way. I did want to put two hard drives on, but uh, ain't going to happen. On the count of. There's no bay for it. And this case is actually only designed for one. So, one drive it is, but it is a 200 gig, so. Right, so I've got the screws in this side. Flick this around. Uh, like I said, I'm only going to put one in this side. It's just to, otherwise, you'll push on there and it'll, you know bow inwards on one side so it just holds things a bit more secure. Like I said you can put two in if you want but it's not necessary. Not in my opinion anyway. And it's just extra screws to take out should you uh, should you upgrade or have to change the hardware because it's failed. So I'm going to put one in the floppy disk drive like so. And one more in the hard drive. And drive wise, we are done. Like that. And actually, I can put this side panel back on because we are done this side. So, I'm going to slide the panel, lay it down because I find it easier. Lay that down, find a couple of case screws to hold that on. Because there's nothing more annoying than trying to work on a computer and the side cover keeps dropping off. I'm going to pause you in a minute while I just go and find a... What was it? It was the thermal paste and something else that I've actually totally forgotten. <laughs> Really helpful, isn't it? Oh, cable ties, that was it. Because I knew I'd do it, I haven't put it on properly. <laughs> it's a good idea to make sure it's um, slid in at top and bottom properly. It's a good job, it's only two screws, isn't it? Right. on that time. We're good now. Ouch. No idea where that one just bounced off to but I've got another tray here. Another tray, another screw I should say. Another tray of screws. There. That's what I meant. Another tray of screws. There we go. Right. So I'm going to pause you for a second while I go and find those last couple of items up. Okay, that did take me as long to find those as I thought it would. I bought the snips just for the cable ties. That's just for cable management if you're that fussy with it. But everything was actually in the same room within the reach, so. Right. 
Now, when you insert a processor like this one, you've got to be careful with these because you don't want to bend the pins. But they will only go in one way. Now, if you notice on this processor, there's a little arrow here and notch. And the same on this socket here. So you want to line those up. Drop it in gently. And just push the lever down like that. Job done. Thermal paste is just as simple. I've got some cheap crap here. If you're going to build, you know, a serious modern gaming rig, which is expensive, use decent paste. You can get away with cheaper stuff on stuffs like this. Right. What I'm going to do, put a blob right in the middle there. I've actually got a split in the side, as you probably noticed. And uh, grab this. That goes in just like that. It should, it should click on there. It's where you need like three pairs of hands, hence why I use my head. Right, that should be nicely clipped on, yep. Plug the cooler into the board. The header for that sort of thing is usually right next to the processor, so... And the plug behaves itself. Right, that's on. So, that on, that on. Put the RAM in in a minute. Alright, lay the case down. You may not see a lot now. Okay. Jiffy you around a bit. There we go. Because I need to lay it down. And my tripod doesn't go up high enough for you to get a bird's eye view, unfortunately. Uh, oh, that's what I'm going to do as well. I'll redo all this, but because I don't know what lengths I'm going to need, I'm going to trim these big old uh, cable ties off. I have got some big ones if I need them. Usually I'm not too fussy about cable management, but I don't like them when they're too long and flailing all over the place. So there we go. I'm going to stuff these up there at the bottom. Oh, before we do anything... I am going to show you that you do need to put this in first. And to do that... Make sure it goes in the right way up. Usually your PS2 sockets there go at the top, so they'd be power supply end. And it just literally just presses in. Just like that. That's all you do. That's your IO shield installed. So I'm going to go ahead with the motherboard and uh, try and slot this in. Cable out of the way. There we go. And that should all just butt right up and into place. I've actually got the screws laid out for this. I've got a head. <laughs> I've actually got a head for once. So uh, we zoomed in a bit. Who is it? No. Nope. Just naturally up that close. Right. Bung the screws in. And there's going to be, I'll just put one in, so two, three, four, five, six screws in this particular one. Some larger, larger motherboards will have a few more. But most of the time, even the micro ATX ones will, uh, will uh, have six screws. The ones I've come across anyway. You know, I'll turn all this on when I'm done. That'll be part two, by the way. 
Part two will be in. I'll probably do this in three parts actually. This will be part one. The bill. Position can we see? I believe we can. If I pull that out of the way. Now these will only go in the one way. If you look, there's a little notch. So all you've got to do with DDR, if you look, one side is actually longer than the other where the notch is. So uh, all you've got to do is make sure it goes in the round. Right, the right, round the right way. So your short side is here, your long side is there. So you make sure you got that round the right way. Open up your clips. Slot in. And should. Sometimes they can be a bit tough to push in, but try not to force it too hard because you could break something. So, that's our job done. So now we've got a bundle of wire. I think this is one thing that actually scares a lot of people, the bundle of wires. Uh, but uh, we've got a 20 pin socket there. It is, it's not that difficult because, you know, that one will only go in one socket on the motherboard. That, actually what I'm going to do, because it's quite tricky to get to. I'm going to insert the ribbon cable, or the IDE cable, for the floppy disk drive first. You may not have to, it just depends on where it's located, but because it's located there, I've got the hard drive in the way. If I plug the power in for the board, that would have gotten in the way as well. So I'm trying to sort these cables out here as I go. Right, these will only go in one way round as well, so there's no, there's no risk if you're getting it round the wrong way or in the wrong socket like I said it will only go in one socket it will only go in one way round the same with this little four pin here that has got to go right up in this corner on this motherboard which might be a bit fiddly but again it'll only go the one way round if I can get that Damn thing to go in there. You do need a bit of patience for this. Small hands. <laughs> so that's that job done, right? Lower you down because we've got some headers at the bottom to connect some cables onto. Imagine gonna uh... oh, no. leave that for a minute. We've got the motherboard power connected. These are all, well actually this one isn't needed so I'm going to probably cable tie that up there because we don't need that one. It's just going to get in the way. So, we have audio cable. Which is a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 pin connector. I don't know if you can see the pattern on there. So, you just look for the header that matches, pretty much, which is there now, because again, for the front audio, there is only one header that that will go on. 
sit in the case on. Now we're lucky with this as well because all the front panel um, cables for the power button and whatnot are actually on this or this depending on what sort. Sometimes they are separate which is a whole new kettle of fish. <laughs> uh, but again there is a specific pin layout on here and on this board it's the one with all the multi colours on it. I don't know how well you can see that. I apologise if you can't actually see it but uh, as other headers it will only go on the one way round and it is a different orientation than the USB header although it's got the same number of pins. I'm having trouble getting this on the bloody header. I hope those pins aren't bent. There we go. Got it. There. Right. So, like I said before, on this board I've got two USB or four USB ports on there. So I've got two of these cables. I think I'm going to use the left hand one so I need this cable because I've only got the one header on the board and again it just they are labelled as well if you really do get stuck well they're labelled on many motherboards not all I've had a few where they haven't been labelled but uh, on most motherboards they are labelled thankfully we're getting there we are getting there uh, what have we got to do next no, I can just, actually I can put floppy disk drive power on so I don't have to try and feed it under the ribbon cable, the IDE cable. Each right there. Get on that. There we go. We're on. I don't know if that was oh it might have been just in shot. I'll zoom you out a bit now. Same with these ribbon cables, they will only go on the one way as well. Um, so I need two of these. Right. Now, the sockets for these, which connect the hard drive and the CD drive, are actually labelled. They're labelled IDE1 and IDE2. The hard drive needs to go on IDE1 which is usually on a lot of motherboards blue. It's not always, some of them are both white or both blue or even you might even get black ones but in this case it's blue. Which makes life a darn sight easier. There we go. And as I said they will only go on one way round so yeah don't need to worry about cocking anything up because it's not possible don't actually know if I want to reuse this one uh, right. I'm go there oh I don't know if this is going to be long enough Tuck it up the back here, out of the way. <laughs> oh, oh, it's just going to be long enough. Right, there we go. That one's on now. Aside from the floppy disk drive, our ribbon cables are connected. Here's our Molex power connectors. Again, they'll only go on one way. But if you get confused, the yellow wires go towards us. Is that broken? No, it's just my imagination. Now, the power connectors can actually be quite tight. So I'm going to tuck that power connector up there because we don't need that one. Um, ooh, we've got two floppy disk connectors on this one. Uh, oh, in that case then, I'm going to swap these around. Uh, yeah, let's put that one up here. And that one, hopefully, on the floppy 
disk drive. And then one of these, there's a reason why I did that and you'll see why in a bit. I wish the floppy cable was a bit shorter but never mind. Uh, do you believe it's this way up? Like so. I'm getting somewhere. Alright, the last job, which I will do now. Well, that one could do with a bit of a clean. I don't know where my, where my brush is, so... I'll clean that one while it's on the PC. Alright. I don't need all that cable, so I am going to use my zip ties now when I can find them. See, this is why I got the zip ties, guys. Some cable management right here. Don't need it that long. Just wrap that around there. Zip it up nice and tight. Snip it. Right. That's got to go in the front. So okay. <laughs> This is why I said I've got to take this off again. To get to it, you've got to take it off. Right, now, I just went looking for a brush and I didn't need to. There's one in here in the kitchen. So, get in here and just uh, give that a brush out. Let's make it. A lot easier to do it now than when it's on the PC, so... Right, now... Sometimes the airflow is actually marked on here, which it is. I don't know if you can see that. Might be a bit dark, but there is a mark in here. But it usually goes from this side to this side where the bracket is for the actual fan motor, so it goes that way through. That's what I want to do on here. So I want it to suck the air in the front. That's what I want it to do. So I'm going to line this up. I do have a pot of screws right here. Tip them out to make a lovely mess. Get this one started. You can put two in if you wish, if you can't be bothered with all four. That works just as well. I've never had a problem doing that. But uh, if you'd rather, you know, be a bit more secure, then you can uh, use all four. As I've got plenty of screws here, I'm going to use all four. self-tapping screws but they can be a bit of a bugger to get going. If you want to you could buy a couple of cheap illuminated ones and have an illuminated one in the front but I've got one but I haven't got connectors on it. Right so what the front fan on the back on. Get that in there right. That. Now I'm going to do the same with the back fan. Right. Uh, da, 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 da. I need to put it that way around so again it sucks it in this way and blows it out the back. So this will be the exhaust fan. Just the same again, you know, you just, uh, this is where you need to be an octopus really, you know, and have like 20 pairs of hands. Well, you need at least three hands for this. Right, I'll line up the hole, 
It's not so bad once I've got one started. But uh, for the sort of machine I'm building, this should be adequate enough cooling. this lot, there is a little fan header and it's right down the bottom here. So um, your three pin connector will just plug straight on there. Now some motherboards have two, some more modern ones will have more than two, you might find three or four on there. This one's only got one so you're probably wondering how we're going to connect up the front fan. That's easy. We use an adapter. See, we've got the Molex there and the socket there. So, put the fan into that socket, and we simply just plug this on a, a free Molex connector like that. There we go. Now that fan's got power, and uh, I might actually find somewhere a cable tie this too because it's getting in the way. I don't want it to get caught in that fan. Uh, um, 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 um. Got nothing to cable tie up to. Oh dear. Um. Hopefully, try that cable round. That's okay. Got a totally free Molex cable there. But, uh, if you don't want the free cables dangling around like these ones are, then uh, what you can do is do a couple of things actually. We can uh, just roll them up like that, put a zip tie around them. up there out of the way and that's one out of the way you see and I could even do the same you know with this just to keep some of the cabling out of the way because there's a few <laughs> quite a few there that we don't need we'll also find that when it comes to servicing the PC it'll be a lot easier because these are out of the way I'm not flailing around getting in the way like they were a minute ago, so here we go. I'm going to trim that one off. Not too worried about that one. And I don't have to, but I'm going to anyway. I'm going to put some around the bottom here. Get out of the way. I don't think these are actually going to be long enough. <laughs> it's a shame that other one, oh there it is, it's a shame I have only got the one um, USB connector on the motherboard, but never mind. There we go, another one here, just help keep them bunched together out of the way. Bottom of the case, that's all. So yeah, I've actually got... There is a hole there, but can I get a zip tie through it? That's the question. And if so, will it be long enough? I 
Okay, and that is. So all I'm going to do is thread that through there, that loop. Did I say you needed a bit of patience? Yeah. That's the fan cable up and out of the way. No risk of it getting caught up in the fan though. And I might be able to tuck that there. Oh, there we go. That is it. Almost it for this part of the video. For part one at least. Like the fact that is sitting over there like that. Can I tuck that? Yes, I can. Good. Pull that out of the way. I can loop around there. There we go. Bit more cable management. Right now, get the side cover on. the other side. You could put thumb screws in if you want to but I don't have any at the minute. Not spare anyway. And by thumb screws I mean they're just ones that you can screw in with your hands. You don't need a screwdriver. And this is this is where I find I'll do all this then it won't work. <laughs> There we go. Now, of course, when I do the the um, video card, I'll have to take all that side cover off again. But anyway, there we go. It's built. It's assembled. In the next video, we will install the OS. All necessary drivers, which I actually have on here. I've already downloaded them from the MSI website. And... Uh, I will actually look through my pile of video cards, oops, sorry, which I've uh, got there and find the best one out of there that I can actually find drivers for as well. So uh, I'll have a dig through that and see what I can find. Because I'm not sure they all work either, so we'll see. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Stay tuned for the next video. And uh, I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.